Tonight's WGN Investigates, doctors in some of the state's most underserved neighborhoods are asking a simple question. Can they continue operating under the state's Medicaid program? Yeah, some physicians fear that they're on the verge of having to shut down. And WGN's Lourdes Duarte spoke with doctors who say the program that is supposed to help the underserved isn't always paying up. Yeah, this isn't just a problem here, but across the country. In Illinois, there is now a special task force looking at how doctors at smaller clinics, oftentimes in low-income neighborhoods, get paid by Medicaid. It's a complicated process that some fear is helping create what's known as medical deserts. You don't have to make an appointment to see us. You just walk in or drive by. For two decades, Dr. Iman Rauda has pursued his passion. In this office itself, more than 10,000 families that we help. His waiting room gives you a glimpse of the cries for help <laughs> that became louder during the pandemic. His Oak Lawn practice extended into a drive through clinic. We can conduct like a full visit through telemedicine, and we can also have the ability to do like a, a full physical examination, which is unique. That's still busy today, but here's where he's hit a roadblock that could one day cut into his passion for medicine. When I reviewed my financial in 2016, I felt like I'm working for free. He says the problem isn't getting any better. He's one of hundreds of doctors complaining about the same thing. We closed at the height of COVID in 2020. Dr. Minal Giri already went through it. I was putting my own money back into the practice just to stay afloat. The practice started by her father came to an end, she says, in part due to Medicaid. The federal and state health care program for low income families helps one in five Americans. 80% of Dr. Geary's patients were funded by Medicaid. Not easy to get paid is an understatement. We would um, not get paid. We would, they would delay payment. So we're able to use these data to estimate how often that occurs and then estimate the costs to doctors' practices of that. To make sense of all this, meet University of Chicago that professor Joshua Gottlieb. His recent study found that 25% of the Medicaid claims are denied for at least one service. It's only 7% for Medicare and 4% for commercial insurers. So you see the difference. Resubmitting claims over and over comes with an added administrative cost, too. His analysis estimates that doctors accept Medicaid are losing on average 17 percent. That means every dollar submitted is worth just 83 cents. Over time, that can make a difference. Are you finding that fewer doctors are choosing to take Medicaid? Indeed. So we find that when doctors move to states with more Medicaid hassles or to states with lower Medicaid payment rates, they're less likely to accept Medicaid patients. In 2020, St. Anthony Hospital, serving the Little Village community, sued the Illinois Department of Health Care and Family Services, which oversees the program here in Illinois, for $22 million in Medicaid payments. The case was eventually dismissed, but it's those types of complaints from small practices feeling the financial impact that put the state agency on alert. They may have to close their doors or no longer accept Medicaid patients. What do you think about that? We want, we want to talk to them. We want to know what's, you know, who they're having problems with, what types of claims they're having problems with. And while the agency continues its work to address complaints, patients are having to make choices. If smaller practices close, families have to turn to larger providers or hospitals that can absorb the administrative costs linked to the Medicaid program. But here's the thing. In low-income communities, the simplicity and proximity of a smaller clinic can make the difference between choosing to be treated and walking away. It's like a medical desert. We have food deserts and we have medical deserts. There was really nowhere for them to go. They got maybe absorbed into systems where, you know, it's a longer commute for them, you know, and maybe they're not going to be seen as quickly as I could have seen them. It's a problem that has no easy solution. The Illinois Association of Medicaid Health Plans has been watching the trend. We've seen consolidation and, and small practices closing across our state um, and across the country. And so there are a lot of contributing factors to that. And Medicaid, you know, I'm sure is a part of it. But that is a, a trend that, you know, I don't think we're going to be in the Medicaid program going to be able to reverse the tide on. For now, the smaller practices are taking it one patient at a time, hoping help arrives in time to keep their doors open. It's sad. It's a sad story that we have to deal with, you know.
And these smaller clinics have handled a lot of the COVID testing and vaccination efforts in some low income neighborhoods. The Illinois Department of Healthcare and Family Services continues to work to fix the billing issues and points to a drop in complaints over the last few years. I'm Lourdes Duarte, WGN Investigates.